Joe Garland? Yes, I am. You're Boston Blackie, aren't you? Yes. Now that we know each other, maybe we'd better talk about my business here. Here's a thousand dollars. One last night from my friend Charlie Kingston. Ah, oh, yes, Charlie Kingston. Good man. Bad gambler, but good man. But why'd he send you to pay his debt? Well, you wanted cash, and he had to leave town on urgent business this morning. Oh, I see. Uh-oh, uh, would you mind waiting in the other room for a minute, Blackie? That buzzer means someone I expected is here. No, not at all. I'll wait even longer than a minute if you'll tell me where I can find a phone. There's a phone in the next room. Oh, thanks. Oh, and close the door behind you, will you, Blackie? I'll, I'll call you as soon as I'm free. No hurry. Hello? Hello, Mary. This is Blackie. Oh, hello, Blackie. Where are you? At Joe Garland's, paying Charlie Kingston's gambling debt. Mm -hmm. Garland's got a visitor in the next room. I'll be over as soon as I can to pick you up. Well, if you are going to pick me up, I'm glad I haven't gained any weight this week. Blackie makes the jokes, Mary. Oh, <laughs> Anyhow, when I get through here, nothing can stop us from eating. Blackie, knock on wood when you say that. All right. Hear that? Yes, I do. And I heard that too, Blackie. What was it? Hold it, Mary. It was a shot in the next room. A shot? Yes, hold the wire. Holy mackerel, the door's locked. Hey, Garland! Garland! I wonder if I can break down the door. Too heavy. Garland! Garland! Mary, you still on the wire? Yes, Blackie. What's the matter? I don't know for sure, but Joe Garland had a visitor in the next room. There was a shot, and now I can't get him to answer. Oh, darling, get out of there and get out fast. I wish I could, Mary, but I can't. The door's locked, and I can't shoot the lock off because I didn't bring my gun with me. You didn't? Well, then pick the lock back. You've got to get out of there. I can't. It's a snap lock inside the door, Mary. There's no keyhole. Oh, golly. Well, then what are you going to do? You tell me. This is all Faraday has to find. Me with murder as my next-door neighbor. <laughs> And now, back to Dick Calmer as Boston Blackie. Enemy to those who make him an enemy. Friend to those who have no friend. Okay, okay, man. You can get Garland's body out of here now. And all the rest of you guys, get out, too. Rollins, that insurance agent threw the inventory in the safe yet? Almost, Inspector Faraday. Good. Faraday, let me out of here. What's the matter, Blackie? Scared to be alone? No, I love it. Only if you won't let me out, send me in a deck of cards so at least I can play solitaire. I bet you even cheat when you're playing cards with yourself, Blanky. Sure I do, but I catch myself at it every time. That's what comes from being smart. Faraday, let me out of here, will you? Hey, if you're so smart, think up some brilliant way to get out. Only stop pounding on that door. You're giving me a pain in the head. That's better than having nothing there, Faraday. Wait till I get out. Just wait till I get out of here. Sure, I'll wait. But not where I have to listen to your voice. Well, Rollins, what is it? What's missing from I'm that safe? I'm Wayne from the insurance company, I can tell you, Inspector. Huh? I've just checked the contents against the inventory. Huh? Here's what's in the safe right now. $500 in cash, a diamond bracelet valued at $10,000, two diamond watches, a pearl necklace, three diamond brooches, and a diamond ruby clip. All the valuable stuff is intact. Well, is anything at all missing? Yes, yes, one small piece of ordinary flagstone. Well, that ought to be a clue. A piece of stone? That's right, Inspector. Ordinary flagstone. Hey, Wayne, you mean to tell me that the killer left that pile of jewelry in Garland's safe and took just a piece of ordinary rock? Yes. Nothing is missing from the safe but a piece of flagstone, well, about the size of a dollar bill. Why, that's crazy. Who'd kill a man for a worthless piece of stone? It apparently wasn't worthless, Inspector. A few months ago, Mr. Garland wanted us to insure it for $20,000, but my company refused. Man, I love all the... Okay, Mr. Wayne, you can go now. I'll get in touch with you later. All right, Inspector. If there's anything I can do, just let me know. I will. Rollins, go outside with Wayne. See that he gets through the police lines, all right. Sure, sure, Inspector. It sure sounds like Blanky is in on it. I'm going to find out. Hey, Faraday, are you going to let me out? Sure, Blanky. Relax. When? Why, now. There. Thanks. But it's about time. Sure is. About time to take you to headquarters. I got a swell cell for you, Blanky. Hot and cold running trustees, adjoining guards, the works. The works is what I'd like to give you for being so stupid, Inspector. What am I being taken downtown for? Two things. The ride and for knocking off Garland. Why did you do it, Blanky? Because he hit me with his bean shooter. 
What do you mean, why did I do it? I didn't. You know I didn't, and I know I didn't. How could I? I was locked in here. The guy's dead, isn't he? You were in the house, weren't you? And I'm sick of you showing up whenever there's a corpse. Ain't I? You're sick, all right. Faraday, fun's fun, but this isn't. When I kill anybody, anybody besides you, I mean, it won't be for a piece of flagstone. Blackie, how did you know it? How did I know about the stone? I heard it with my big baby blue ears. You can hear through doors, you know. And you can walk through doors when they're open. And then lock yourself in another room with the spring lock on the door. And that's what you did. And you waited in the next room for me to find you so you'd have an alibi. Why not? You couldn't have gotten out of the house. So you locked yourself in. Very good theory, Faraday. There's only one thing wrong with it. Yeah? I could have gotten out through a window in the next room any time I wanted to. I don't believe it. You don't think I could have gotten out that one? No. All right. I'll prove it to you. Get that window in there. It's wide open. What window? Where? We have to go inside the room to see it. The window's on the left side. Yeah? I want to see this, Blanky. I don't trust you. I never have, and I never... And you never should, Faraday. Blanky, let me out of here. Let me out. Let you out? Oh, no. I'll let you in on something. I'm leaving. So long, sweetheart. <laughs> Darling, come in. Jack, I'm so glad you're home. What's the matter, darling? Have you seen the afternoon paper? Oh, no, I haven't. Well, look at this. The headline in the first column. Hmm. Well, what about it? It's about Joe Garland's murder. Well, so what? Darling, you're trembling. Well, read it, Jack. Read the reason he was killed. All right, all right. It says, Joe Garland, notorious gambler, was shot and killed in his home early today. All that has so far been reported missing from his safe filled with cash, diamonds, and other precious stones is a small piece of ordinary flagstone. <laughs> that is crazy. It's not crazy at all. Jack, I'm scared. I'm scared to death. Well, why? Because somebody killed Joe Garland for a piece of crummy stone? <laughs> What's that to you, dear? Jack, only three people in the world know the value of that stone. And I'm one of those three people. <laughs> Your apartment is lovely, but not lovely enough to wait in all evening. Darling, are you going to be ready soon? I'm ready now. How do you like my tie? Well, I better stay beautiful or you'll go back and change it again. <laughs> Smart girl. Mm. Come on, let's get out of here before something happens. Uh-oh. Too late. It's already happened. Hell no, Faraday. Oh. Mind if I come in, Blackie? I certainly do, Inspector, but you'll come in anyway. How can you say that, Blackie? Well, you look as if you're all dolled up to go somewhere. Fine, fine. Uh, you'll dress up our jail. Very nice. Here we go again, Faraday. You know I didn't kill Garland. He couldn't have, Inspector. He was locked in the other room when the shot was fired. Uh, maybe. But he locked me in the other room. Why? Because I'll bet Blackie knows why Garland was killed. That's I bet right. Blackie doesn't. You remember what the insurance man said? The only thing missing from the dead man's safe was that piece of flagstone? No, I would anyone want a piece of flagstone bad enough to kill for it? I don't know. I don't care. And further... I guess I better take that phone call. Hello? Hello, Boston Blackie? Yes? This is Jack Evans. I've got to see you right away. My fiancé's life is in danger. And Blackie, she knows why Joe Garland was killed for a piece of stone. Where's your fiancé now? She's here with me. The address is 19 Beverly Lane. Hurry, will you? You bet. Goodbye. Come on, Mary, we've got a date. Oh, goody, at last. Wait a minute, Blackie. Aren't you interested in finding out why a guy is killed for a piece of ordinary rock? Can't hear you, Faraday. All of a sudden, I've gone stone deaf. <laughs> Blackie, this is my fiancé, Carolyn Jones. Hello, Blackie. How do you do? And this is Miss Mary Wesley. How do you do, Miss Jones and Mr. Evans? Miss Wesley. Oh, now, tell Blackie all about it, Carolyn. Well, I'll, I'll get him the letter. It'll explain things much better than I can. What letter? It's a letter from my father, Blackie. I'll be back in just a minute. Well, my goodness, how can a letter from her father have anything to do with Joe Garland's murder? It does seem incredible, Miss Wesley. In fact, it is. I think it's worse than incredible. It's awful. An old blind man sits down with paper and pencil and writes three letters. Because of those letters, a man is killed and two other people are in danger of being killed. You said Miss Jones' father was blind? That's what Carolyn's told me. Here's the letter, Blackie. It'll explain everything. Oh, thanks. I've never shown this letter to anyone, not even to you, Jack. So please, Blackie, don't tell anyone you've seen it. Well, if you'd rather I wouldn't see it now... No, I... no, I, I want you to read it. All right. Here goes. Hmm. It's going to be hard reading. The pencil marks are smudged. And here's what it says. Dear child, I'm sending each of my three children a piece of flagstone. 
I am now old. I am blind. I haven't seen you, and you haven't seen each other in 20 years. At that time, I left you with three different families. So you do not know each other any better than I know you. Well, uh, I'm sorry, but why did he leave you children with three different families? We were very poor, Miss Wesley, and, and the families we knew were very poor, too. None of them could take more than one of us. Oh, I see. I'm sorry about the interruption, Blackie. Go ahead with the letter. Well, there isn't much more. It says, I am now rich, very rich. Stay away from me until six months from today, and then bring this piece of stone with you to my home in Kimberlin, and you will receive one-third of my fortune. The flagstone is from my terrace, and the three pieces must fit exactly. No one knows your names except me, and nobody, including me, knows what you look like. So it is important that you keep and guard this piece of stone I send you. I'll pay whoever brings it. Remember, it is your only means of identification as one of my heirs. Signed, Robert Wilson. Blackie, now do you see why I'm so upset? Yes, I do, Miss Jones. So do I. Joe Garland was one of Carolyn's two brothers. The other brother found out Joe's identity, killed him, and took his stone. Carolyn might be next on his He's list. He's going to kill me next. You've got to find him, Blackie. You've got to. I'll try, Miss Jones. But in a city of several million people, it may be very hard to find him before he finds you. <laughs> And now, back to Boston Blackie. Gambler Joe Garland is killed by an unknown assailant who passes up a fortune in jewels to steal an ordinary piece of flagstone. Carolyn Jones gets help from Blackie through her fiancé, Jack Evans, and shows Blackie a letter from her blind father explaining that pieces of flagstone are to be used by his three children as means of identification at the portioning of the father's fortune. It is obvious that the blind man's third child is the murderer, but no one knows who he is. In an effort to get a lead on him, Blackie goes to see the old man. I'm sorry, Blackie, but you can't see Mr. Wilson. Why not? And who are you to decide? I'm Sam Lewis, Mr. Wilson's lawyer. And I'm sorry, but Mr. Wilson won't see anybody. But look, Lewis, I've got to see him. Thanks to a screwy idea of his, one of his sons is dead and his daughter Carolyn may be killed. What's the matter with him? Now look, Blackie, to put it mildly, Mr. Wilson is an eccentric old man. He can give his money to his children any way he chooses. And he chooses to do it this way. Maybe I can change his mind. You've got to let me see Mr. Wilson. <sighs> well, all right. But I promise you it won't do you any good. Yes, come this way. Thanks. Yes? Mr. Wilson, there's a Boston Blackie here to see you. Well, how many times do I have to tell I you I know you I don't have... want to see anyone, Mr. Wilson, but this man insists. Yes, I do insist, Mr. Wilson. Well, all right, Lewis. That'll be all. Yes, sir. Well, Blackie, what do you want? I want you to describe your three children for me. Or rather, just one of them. The one that I don't know. I'm not telling you anything. But you must. Do you know one of your sons has been murdered? Yes, the fool. I don't think he was, Mr. Wilson. I think you were, for sending him that piece of stone. That's why he was murdered. But if you'll tell me who your other son is and where I can find him, maybe I can keep your daughter from being killed. I'm not going to tell you anything. Why not? If they can't take care of themselves when all they own is a worthless piece of stone, then they can't take care of themselves when they're rich. I will tell you this. I'll pay anyone who shows up with a matching piece of flagstone. Now get out of here. Look, Mr. Wilson, all get I want... out, I say. I may be old, I may be blind. But you are out of here in 30 seconds, I'll shoot you dead. That rifle is loaded? Don't make me prove it. All right, I'll get out. And stay out. Don't worry, I will. Oh, Lewis, you still here? Yeah. Huh. Didn't get along with the old man, did you? No, and I'm not getting along with this case either. Somewhere in this town, there's a man who is going to kill Carolyn Jones. I have no idea who he is, where he is, or what he is. You know, the man I'm looking for might even be you. You're pacing around your office as if you were in a cage. Oh. Not that you don't belong in one. Get out of here, will you, Blackie? 
I've got troubles enough. Get out of here, Blanky. Everybody throws me out. You've got troubles, Harvey. Yes. Joe Garland was murdered. I don't have a single clue as to who did it. Not a clue. That's not half as bad as my problem, Faraday. I know a girl who's sure she's going to be killed, and I haven't the slightest clue as to who's going to kill her. You mean Carolyn Jones? How do you know this Carolyn Jones isn't the killer? Maybe maybe she found out Garland was her brother. You ever think of that? Yes. And there's only one way I can think of to prove she's not the killer. Yeah? If she turns up dead, I'll know she isn't. <laughs> I read in the papers a guy named Joe Garland got killed, Mr. Evans. Is that how come you got two pieces of stone now? Yes, Peters, that's how. You'll go see my old man, Mr. Robert Wilson, in Joe Garland's place. This is his stone. Mm. You want Barney to go with you with your stone, eh? That's right. I don't think I ought to show up at all. If I did, it would be pretty obvious that I killed Joe and, uh, Carolyn. You, uh... You're really going to kill your fiancée, Evans? <laughs> my fiancée? She's my sister. Only she doesn't know that I'm her brother yet. When you're going to let her know it? As soon as I have to have the third stone. There's plenty of time. I've got to get her alone to kill her. And somewhere where I won't leave any clues. When I get her stone, you and your friends take all three of them to my old man. And don't cross me, kid. I know too much about you. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Your old man's going to give us the dough if we have the stones, ain't he? Yes. Anybody that shows up with the stones gets the money. You sure you got an alibi for the time my brother Joe was killed, in case you're questioning? Sure, sure. Foolproof. I was with a dozen Hold guys. Hold it, Yeah, sure. Hello? Jack. Jack, this is Carolyn. Oh, yes, Carolyn. Jack, darling, I don't know what to do. I'm so scared. I'm afraid to go anywhere. I'm even afraid to stay here in my apartment. Oh, but you're safe there. No, Jack, no, I'm not safe anywhere. I'm afraid he's going to kill me. And I don't even know who he is. He might be the postman, the elevator man, anybody. Jack, I, I don't feel safe with anyone in the world but you. Well, I tell you what I'll do, darling. What? I'll come over and stay with you. Oh, would you mind, dear? Oh, certainly not. Right. And I'll tell you what. Yes? Have your maid tell everybody you've gone to the country for a few days. Right. I'll be over and don't you worry, sweet. I'll take care of you. the story of the stone, Faraday. Old Man Wilson told it to me. You satisfied now? I'm satisfied that Old Man Wilson is out of his head, Blanky. Well, suppose you get out of my hair and out of my apartment, then. Mary, how about you and I leaving for a nice, quiet evening, looking for a killer we know we can't find? Oh, Blanky, there must be some way we can find him. I suppose so, but I don't know what that way is. Blanky, listen. Suppose we arrest whoever shows up at Wilson's with that stone. That'll give us a murderer, sure. I doubt it. The murderer knows that, and I guarantee he's got a way out. Besides, it won't save Carolyn's life. Do you know where she is, Blackie? With a fiancé, I suppose. She'd be smart to stay with him. That's the one guy in the world she'd be safe with. Call his house, will you, Mary? Oh, sure, sure. Look, Blackie, you saw the letter the old man sent to Carolyn. Was there anything about it, uh, well, it looked phony? No, it looked legitimate enough. It was written very carefully in pencil. Pencil, huh? People don't write in pencil much nowadays. I know. But Wilson doesn't do anything the usual way. Look at his method of... Blackie, there's no answer at Jack Evans' house. Well, uh, hang up and try her apartment. Do you have a number? Yes, sir. The girl's not with her fiancé, huh? Blackie, she could be the killer. Somehow, I don't think so. Jack Evans may be at her place, you know. Did Evans know much about this stone and letter business? No, not too much. She had told him about the stone, but... He didn't see the letter until I did. Hello? Oh, may I speak to Miss Jones, please? Sorry, she's not in. Oh, just a minute. Blackie, she's not in. The maid's on the phone, though. At least I think it's the maid. Yeah, let me talk to her. All right. Hello? Hello? Uh, where is Miss Jones? Uh, who's she with? She's with her fiancé, Mr. Evans. Where'd they go? She and Mr. Evans have gone to the country. Well, when they leave? I don't know. You don't know? I'm very sorry, I don't. Hello? Hello? Huh, hung up. Funny thing for her to do. She was scared to death of going places, and yet she's going somewhere with her fiancé. 
didn't sound right somehow. Hey, I just remembered something. Congratulations. So you remembered something. Mary, do you remember what Carolyn Jones said before she showed me that letter? Yes, she said she'd never shown it to anyone. Not even to Evans. That's right, but he didn't claim to know anything about it. No, he didn't, Mary. But he said something before he saw that letter that makes me think that he'd either seen it before or one just like it. Oh, Blackie, what? When Carolyn went out of the room, he said, and this is almost a quote, that old man sat down with pencil and paper. So what? So there's Faraday. That letter was written in pencil. Yeah? If he hadn't seen that letter before or received one himself, how would he know that? Blackie, do you mean that Jack Evans is the other brother? I think so. And Carolyn Jones is going to be his dead sister if we don't find them soon. But how can we find them, Blackie? All we know is that they're out in the country. I think I know what you mean, Faraday. And the one bad thing about the country is that there's so much of it. <laughs> Jack, at last I feel safe. Oh, do you, darling? Why shouldn't I, dear? We're alone in my apartment and everybody thinks we're out in the country. For the first time since Joe Garland's death, I feel safe. Oh, I'm glad you feel that way, dearest. <laughs> Jack, you're the only one in the world I can trust. I don't know what I'd do without you. <laughs> I'm glad I met you, too. <laughs> darling, do you have that stone in your apartment? Mm-hmm. In a safe place. No, I guess not. It's in that drawer right over there. Oh. <laughs> you know, hmm? I'd like to see a stone a man would kill for. Could I see yours? Well, yes. I don't know why not. It, it's really not much to look at, though. It's right here in this drawer. Here you are, darling. Thanks. Hmm. Seems to be an ordinary piece of... Flagstone. Well, it is. But it matches the one I got from Brother Joe. The one you got from... No. Yes. No. Yes, sister dear. No, no, you aren't. You can't be. Jack, you can't. You can't be my brother. You're my fiancé. <laughs> that's what you thought, because that's what I wanted you to be. Come here, Carolyn. Come here, close to me. Jack, you're not going to... Kill you. But I have to. No, no, no. I searched for Joe until I found him. I found you, too. Almost at the same time I found Joe. But it's taken longer to get around to killing you. Come here, darling. No, no. Then I'll come no, to no, you. No, Jack, please, 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 Jack. You mustn't object to my hands around your throat. Painting makes it so much easier, Carol. Hey, what's that? What's that, Evan? Blackie! It's just Faraday and me, that's all. It would be a good thing for you if Carolyn has only fainted. Get your hands up, Evans. Yes. Or oh, don't. Maybe I'd prefer that, so I'd have a reason to drop you. Okay, they're up. They're up. See that you're keeping that way. Oh. Carolyn. Yeah, now she's coming too, Faraday. Well, we didn't hear from outside the door. She'll be able to tell us. Well, good thing we came up here before we started to look for these two in the country, huh? We were going to have to follow a trail, Faraday, and the best place to pick up a trail is the place it started, and that's here. Well, Carolyn's really coming out of it now. She'll be ready to talk in a minute. Bring her down to headquarters when she feels better, Blackie. But there's no hurry. I think this guy Evans will tell us all we need to know before we get through with him. Yes, he looks like the talking kind, Faraday. Take him downtown. Maybe you can make him sing. Oh. 